Hey, welcome to another Think About It Thursday. I am Kanye Ford, but you can simply call me Coach K, your certified clinical sexologist, also known as a life, love, and intimacy coach, where every single week I am going to bring you a new topic dealing with anything life, love, intimacy, and anything sprinkled in between. Now, before we get into this week's topics, I want to make sure that you are subscribed to the page and that you've turned the notifications on so you don't miss a single premiere weekly chat. If there's ever a topic that you want to hear more about, drop it in the comments or simply communicate with me directly and I'll make sure I get that on. You see these little flybys be driving me crazy, y'all. Sorry about that. Um, this week, I think, is a more of a serious topic and it's one that <laughs> I continuously do here at home um, as some of you may know you may not know I am a mother of five the children's age range from nine years old to 21 years old yes almost 22 and so what I'm talking about I actually um, talk to every single one of the kids about it in some form of fashion and so this week's topic is age appropriate sex talks with your children. Yep, I said it and it's necessary. Automatically, when people hear the word sex, mind goes directly to a physical act of two people engaging in intercourse. Well, when you are talking about sex appropriate conversations, that could be anything from making sure that your children protect themselves if they are sexually active and old enough to do so. Um, making sure that your children know boundaries when it comes to touch um, and, and just everything up to and including the physical act. So I just want to make sure that we are understood on that part before we go further into the talk. So thinking about when you were younger, um, if you can recall, did you ever have a true sit down conversation with anyone about the appropriateness or inappropriateness of anything in the realm of sex and sexuality? Probably not, and probably not before you potentially have gotten into kind of a sticky situation that you really didn't know what to do. So when I think about my, I say three to five year old, you know, I bathe all of my kids. Um, my husband bathed them too. But when my children were younger and when I would occasionally, when I gave them a bath, <clears throat> I would always say, this is your body. No one should touch your body inappropriately, including mommy, daddy, the doctor. And I would name, you know, some other uh, people. That was me having an age appropriate sex and sexuality conversation with my toddler. That was me helping my small child to create and understand boundaries. And so that they understand that this is, is their body. This is, they are the owners and the caretakers of their body. Now, I also would let them know what their um, body parts, the names of them. And yes, using the proper anatomy names of children's body parts is important. Why is it important? Well, because the last thing you want to do is keep calling your baby's um, vagina a pocketbook. And so your eight-year-old one day comes home and say, yeah, you know, he said, how was school? Oh, it was okay, Mr. James. Um, you know, he's always playing with my pocketbook. He's always asking to see my pocketbook. And you're not thinking. You're like, oh, that's nice. You, sh you can share you know, allow people to see your pocketbook. So you think about a physical pocketbook, but you forgot that all these years, what you've taught her is that her vagina's name is a pocketbook. And so when she tells you that and you nonchalantly say, oh, okay, then 
in her world, she feels like it's appropriate. Whereas if you would have taught her that her private area, you can even say private area, um, is a vagina. And she came home and said that Mr. So-and-so is always trying to see and ask me about my vagina. Then you know right away, red flags going up, we're going to investigate. So being able to communicate to small children appropriate anatomy names or something that is extremely close, you can even say your private area, um, it's important to do that. Being able to teach children at an early age that this is their body and they have boundaries and people should not touch it inappropriately. Even my pediatrician, when my pediatrician would examine the children, they would say, now you know that me touching you right now is an examination and that no one should touch you inappropriately outside of the comfort of your parent who is sitting there or of you if they make you feel uncomfortable. So even that pediatrician is instilling in the children at a young age that no one should be touching them in a way that makes them feel uncomfortable. Now, as they get older, we have to be careful with saying if it makes you feel uncomfortable. So if you think about your 12 year old little boy who goes to school and an older girl touches him and he gets aroused, maybe that's not truly uncomfortable to him. Maybe it feels good to him. So by you saying that someone just, you know, makes you feel uncomfortable, but in his world, he was aroused. So it wasn't, then he feels like it's okay. So as your children get older, then you change the conversation context and you let them know, not just in an uncomfortable way, but no one should be touching your private area or your penis or your genitals or your scrotum, whatever you want to say that's anatomy, that's autonomously correct in that moment, but make them understand what you mean by the word uncomfortable. And should, I mean, that they should or should not be touching them in that area. If it's a physician and the coach is um, holding their testicles and saying cough, turn your head and cough. Yes, of course, that's a part of the examination. But being, being able to consistently talk to your children as they get in their age ranges um, about different areas that they will experience throughout, but being able to communicate with them on a regular basis and don't do this every day. Don't scare the bejeebas out of them. Don't be like, no one should touch you. No one should touch you on an everyday basis. Cause then you create this stigma, this scared person who's scared to go out into the world. And I'm just talking about sprinkle it in occasionally, especially in those teen years, especially because that peer pressure is going to happen. Their bodies are going to start to develop. They're going to develop differently than other bodies. But most important, I want you to really understand what you don't talk to with your kids, someone else may talk to with your kids. And what you don't want is the wrong person giving your child information about their bodies, about sex, about sexuality, about anything in that realm. You don't want that coming from someone else that may misinform them. So let it come from you. Also, by you opening up those lines of communication, then your child is more likely to come to you when something is inappropriate or not right. So people, please talk to your children. Age appropriate sex conversations are important. And when they turn 18, the conversations do not start, stop, excuse me, stop. They don't stop. They continue. You are now potentially sending this 18 year old off to college. They need those conversations more than ever. The peer pressure is different. They're grown. They feel like they should be able to say yes. Even though they want to say no, they feel guilty for saying no. And they end up in situations that can be harmful. So please, parents, continue to have age-appropriate sex conversations with your children throughout if for whatever reason you're not comfortable doing so, 
you can reach out to someone who is in that profession, hey, here I am, that can help you start that conversation, sit in with you, with your child to have those conversations, or if you'd like, start those conversations for you and encourage your child to come and talk to you. So please feel free anytime to reach out. If you want to just jump on a quick discovery call, I actually on my website have a section for adolescents. So you can kind of read through that and we can get some conversation started with your children. So you can reach out to me anytime by going to loveandintimacy101.com. You can email me at info at loveandintimacy101.com. Or you can just give me a call or text at 804-967-4551. Again, if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed to this page so you don't miss any of my weekly topics because they're pretty good and they're very informative. So subscribe to the page, turn those notifications on, leave comments below, let me know what you want to hear and if this was helpful because I, I definitely want to know that. And if you need any help talking with your child, or getting through to them. Feel free to reach out. This has been Coach K with another Think About It Thursday, and I will see you next week.